Raja Abdul Ghani's husband was killed by a suicide bomber two years ago. She has seven children to support. She was given a loan by a microfinancing project for women so she could have an oven built. People bring her flour, she makes the bread, for which she is paid around eight cents per piece. If I buy my children's shoes, I can't afford to buy them a hat. I'm grateful for this project. If I hadn't been taught this skill and lent the money, our life would be even harder. Razia often leaves her children at this creche when she comes to her lessons. These women, like her, were first taught to read and write before being taught a skill and then given $100 to start a small business. They come regularly to improve their skills and pay the money back with the cash they earn. Before, these women had no skills and some of their husbands refused to let them learn. We've worked with the community to encourage them and help them sell their products. They're more independent now and they don't need to ask for money from their husbands. Although Razia's story certainly offers a glimmer of hope with respect to improving women's rights here in Afghanistan, there are many who are afraid that progress that's been made could be lost and I'm here to meet one woman who's determined not to let that happen. Shinkai Karokail is one of 69 women members of Afghan's parliament. She says despite progress like a law to help protect women from violence, the government must do more through funding and education. The huge amount of money goes to the security sector rather than to go uh, to education or health, or especially on women's empowerment and, and uh, girls' education. So this is the, one of the biggest challenge which we really face, that the 60% of our national budget goes to the, the security issue. Women's empowerment shouldn't be like a, it's not like a priority for our government, actually. Razia has little choice but to be the sole breadwinner for her family. But her daily struggle using the skills she has learned represents a fragile beginning of independence for millions of women in Afghanistan. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera, Kabul.